Uh, welcome to Midwest Hunting and Outdoors by Two Dumbasses. Uh, we sit here at our at my place actually, and uh, and we're sitting at this table actually, Joel. That that uh, is part of the subject we were going to talk about, right? Yeah, this episode's a little off the beaten path, but uh, th- we've we've had a wood project that we've been working on for a long time, and we're very close to being completed with it. So we wanted to share it with our folks. Um, it may not fit in 100% with our theme, but you've heard us reference the table we've been working on, so we thought we'd, we'd take the time to build an episode on it. Yeah, and some of it, I mean, some of the wood actually came from our properties, so uh, that's why we thought also it might fit. So uh, we'll, I'll start with the story here a little bit. So two years ago, I built this table. Um, it's kind of a bar. My wife wanted a bar, and I'd never done anything like this before. And I put in some corks. I used some old uh, wine crates. Uh, The walnut wood is from Joel's family farm that that trims it out. And then then epoxy. And uh, we have a local vendor, uh, Sonny Schroeder, who basically provide, we designed the the base and he built that for us. And we actually had another friend of ours locally who owns a restaurant, whom you'll meet later. And his name's Tony. And Tony and his wife really fell in love with this, and he came up with the idea that he would like to have us do a table for him. Yeah, so he he was building an addition to the the restaurant, and uh, we'll let Tony explain that. But uh, the short story is, is he was building an addition to the the restaurant, and he really wanted what he's calling a chef's table, which is you know reservation only, kind of a special meal gatherings pre-weddings kind of things like that and uh and then he also had some wood from his uh family family farm that he wanted to use in it yep so what we ended up doing was uh tony didn't have a real design in mind and so we actually we had several pieces of wood that that we liked that that would fit in here and then we also wanted to incorporate some of tony's ideas into that table obviously and uh I think the first thing we started with was, hey, what was going to be the main theme that we were going to put in here? And lo and behold, I had uh, some trees that we had harvested from the farm, uh, honey locusts. And I did not expect this, but it had wormholes, grubs all the way through the whole, all the, all the slabs. And I was super disappointed. And to be honest with you, I was going to, I was going to burn it cut it all up i I didn't know what i was going to do with it and when tony approached us that's when hey and you could see nature's nature's gifts of how they recreated that wood we shared it with tony and tony absolutely wanted them incorporated into this table and as you'll find out in in one of the interview with tony is is tony's very creative Mm -hmm. or or artistic artistic you know very very uh turned on by the shapes colors and things like that so uh, he fell in love with that wood right from the get-go yeah yeah so gosh as joel said it's, t- it's taken us a long time we've we've learned a few things every time you use this epoxy you're going to learn something and uh while not perfect it does have some great characteristics and we are super happy with the output yeah yeah so let's let's kind of talk through and we'll, we'll you know you're going to see more pictures of the table as we progress through it than us talking in the background more than anything else but uh let's let's maybe kind of walk through the steps of the construction right so our our thought was one we weren't going to build the bottom of this table we didn't want anything to do so we had a local vendor sunny sunny build a metal bottom uh for it which was amazing a piece of art by itself you know and he didn't just construct it he also the way he took this this piece of steel is he put a patina on it i don't want to divulge all his secrets but he took an acid an acid-based wash and let it do its wonders and then cleaned it up and boy it's beautiful i wish i would have done that on this table it's just so beautiful yeah just a yeah, I, I don't, I don't, I, there's absolutely nothing on that bottom of that table that I would uh, change it 
I wish I could just duplicate it on tables we got at home, right? So it's it's beautiful. He did a great job. However, it's made out of steel, and we found out pretty darn heavy to to move around. So, but uh, bottom line is, is hey, we kind of the strategy or tactic we had was we don't want anything to do with you know the legs and the foundation of the table. Um, so they had that built, and then uh, we wanted to keep it as close to a sheet of plywood size, or maybe a little less than that. Uh, for the bottom support to seal up the epoxy and also give us a base to, to, to screw and secure the boards from the top. So we ended up with it's just a little bit shy of 48 inches wide and just a little bit shy of uh, eight. eight feet yep. uh, long and uh, just a couple inches narrower on, on both sides. And uh, it, it turned out great. If I remember right, we started from the uh, uh, with with the locus on the outside and kind of framed that in, and then started piecing wood on the inside, um, and then we'd sc secure it with screws and glue from the bottom and from the side where we could. Yep. And then the other thing we did is so this this deep pour epoxy that you pour on super important that you. You plug the gaps because a that epoxy is super expensive two is it'll run out of your seams just like water if you don't have that thing properly sealed you're going to run into problems and so what we did was is we sealed all the way around around the table around the edges underneath and we found out we missed a couple piece places but for the most part and then we taped a few of the seams underneath and that's super critical the next thing is is you got to do a seal coat and i don't care who you are do a seal coat and if you don't you'll know you didn't you missed something and what the seal coat does is it takes that wood and seals seals it because wood corks or whatever you have in there gives off air right and you can do some things to get rid of a few of the bubbles but if you have something in your table that you didn't properly seal coat, it's going to be like Niagara Falls of air coming into your table. Yeah, and as as perfect and nice as this table is, you know, there's some uh, there was some opportunity for me to seal up some things uh, with a seal coat before uh, pouring on it. So I do have we do have a few uh, bubbles in there. Um, we've taken care of some of them, uh, most of them actually. Um, but it's not only wood, Tim, but some of the, so as this table, Tony wanted to put some, uh, some items in there, golf balls, ammunition, arrowheads, you name it, you'll see the pictures. There's all kinds of, uh, things that we put in there. And, and for the most part, most of those items, um, were self-sealing, didn't leak air, but, uh, there's a couple items like the jackknives and, and a couple other things that for whatever reason, you know, um, have some bubbles coming out of it. So Absolutely. It's, uh, it's tricky stuff. It, it's beautiful. It does a great job, this epoxy, but uh, it is it is a tricky thing. I can't wait for his patrons to see this because I'm just, I mean, I'm just tickled at how it looks. Uh, gosh, what? how many different types of epoxy did we use, Joel? Uh, well, the company that we used was... Stone. Yeah, Stone Company. Stone countertops um, out of Oregon. I think they're out of Portland, Oregon. I'd recommend it. It's good epoxy compared to the epoxies we've used. We use two or three different kinds now and it's by far the best, I think. Um, but we used three different kinds of epoxies from Stone Coat. Um, one was a super thick uh, seal coat, uh, but the most of the epoxy in that they have a deep pour that you can pour up to two inches. So again, looking at the pictures, you'll see some of these cavities that we filled with the epoxy um, was almost two inches thick. And um, back in the old days, before, before we do this, you'd have to pour an eighth of an inch at a time. So you'd have maybe seven or eight, maybe 10 pours to get that full. And uh, we were able to pour most of those in, in one pour. So I have about almost five gallons of epoxy on this table how many gallons do we have on tony's i think we ended up with about 12 and a half 12 and oh. a half oh yeah. i'd buy 
five gallons at a time. Oh, that's enough. No. <laughs> Five more gallons. That's enough. Not quite. And then we got this whole COVID thing. I mean, so it's not like you can just, with this whole COVID, the supply chain for products has just been totally messed up. So, hey, if you want five, you want five gallons, you're thinking, I'm going to order it for next week. Oh, guess what? No. How many weeks do you have to wait? Yeah, there was a a period there we had to wait six weeks, I think, for an order to come in uh, to get back in stock. Yeah. You know, the other thing that was new to both of us from woodworking and more from the epoxy is it's the first time that I've used color in the epoxy. So you'll see in these pockets that the bottom, uh, these pockets are filled with items. But we, is your, actually your idea, I'll give you credit for it, is, hey, what if we could paint that black? And then it went from paint black to, hey, how about if we put some colored epoxy in there? So we, we purchased some uh, metallic black um, powder and uh, we poured the, just the bottom, quarter of an inch, eighth of an inch of those pockets with that black metallic epoxy. And man, I think that just was the ticket, man. It sets off those pockets and- Gives a little texture to it. I'd do that again as well. I would do it again. Normally, I'm not a big fan of that whole colored epoxy because I think it takes away from the beauty of the wood. But if you can use it like we used it and I think knead it into the design, man, I think it really, it's really beautiful. It was sharp. So, yeah, we'd love to hear your feedback from uh, the podcast and the pictures and some video uh, of the table. And again, we know it's not perfect. We learned a lot going through it. Um, I know Tony's, Tony and Kim are super happy with it. I'm excited for them to get the addition of the restaurant opened up and, and uh, people using that table and see what you know, kind of feedback we get. You know, there's one other thing is, is uh, that we, this table here, everything I was dealing with was inch. It was an inch board, right? So if, and we're dealing with wood and wood's not a perfect material. So it, it will warp, bend, etc. Well, I can muscle it. I can muscle an inch board. But this this table has two inch boards. And let me tell you, you aren't muscling it. Uh, so again, we're dealing with imperfect materials, as beautiful as it is. Uh, be prepared if you go after something like that. You better have your ducks in a row to make things look great. We had a couple instances to where things weren't just right, and we, we were trying to muscle it, and, and you're just not going to. You're not going to muscle that wood. Yeah. It, we, we had some big frustrations around even getting some of the two-inch cut straight and, and whatnot. But, uh, yeah, again, looking back at it, it was, a good, uh, it was a good project. We estimate we've got a little bit over 100 hours in it from beginning to end, and... Uh, it, uh, yeah, it's it's a neat project. I'm glad. I'm pretty proud of it. I know you're proud of it. We're proud of it. And uh, love to have you go take a look at it. Just as an FYI, I mean, some people are going to ask, you're to buy this table somewhere in the neighborhood, 10 to 12 grand probably. Yeah, it's not cheap. And uh, obviously, Tony's got a lot less than that. And we, we're not charging him for any labor or anything like that. But, uh, yeah, just the just the epoxy alone is is you know probably fifteen hundred dollars uh, in the table. Yeah. So, good so, stuff. So with that, let let's get onto the table. Yeah. Thanks for watching, and again, give us your comments. Uh, if you get a chance to go up to Brick Street here in Alby, Iowa, and see Tony and Kim with at uh, Brick Street, great place to eat, great place to drink, and uh, take a look at the table and tell them the two dumbasses sent you. Yeah, super super great people. Thank you. Hey Jake. Tim, how you doing? Pretty good. What, what are we doing here today? Yeah, so we're getting close to the, you know, knock on wood, the, if not the last pour, really close to the last pour. So um, we just got done sanding this with 220 grit and 80 grit um, where it was rough. Um, but we're planning on just putting, just planning on putting uh, another small 16th of an inch coat of epoxy over top of this and then get the edges nice and uh, complete and uh, see where we end up. How long have we been? Hey Jake, what are we doing here, pal? So we are 
getting ready to mix up some epoxy. Uh, this epoxy is, uh, I'm trying to get my stopwatch going here. This epoxy is a uh, one to one ratio. Hang on, I'm gonna zoom in on this stone coat. So stone coat B, and that's what you just poured in there. You start with the B and you mix the A with it. But we're gonna make a gallon. The A is like super thick. And we're going to mix it for about eight minutes. Tim, we're on location today. First of all, before we do that, we're a week before Christmas and we got cheer in front of us. So oh. happy holidays and Merry happy Christmas. Merry Christmas. Merry Christmas. Merry Christmas. Cheers. <laughs> but we are on special location today and um, with, with the owners of Brick Street. Yeah. So let's uh, have Tony and Kim introduce themselves and then we want to talk through, this is kind of the final chapter of this table. Uh, before it uh, hits the public. So, Tony, Kim, you guys want to introduce yourself sure. real quick? I'm Tony. I'm Kim. Johnson, and we're the owners of Brick Street Grill here in Albee, Iowa. Yeah. So, tell us a little bit about Brick Street. It's how long have you guys owned it? Uh, well, it'll be... Uh, Five and a half years. Yeah, going on. It'll be six years next uh, next year, and uh, um, bought it well, five and a half, six years ago, moved back home to be back around family, born and raised here in Albia, and um, bought this little bar and building this big restaurant going alongside of it, and brought my wife out here, transplanted her from Phoenix, Arizona, to <laughs> Albia, Iowa, to uh, come enjoy the beautiful winter months. And, <laughs> <laughs> and I know people can't see this right now, but you've built quite an addition to your restaurant. I mean, you've yes. probably tripled its size I think. Oh absolutely yeah yeah when I it'll, bought it uh, yeah when I bought it, it was just a small little bar on that side uh, uh, building was built in 1904 uh, the original building we've just added on and 
tried to keep as much of the natural history of the building in place as possible and uh, adding a whole new restaurant on to that. To, uh, so why don't we talk that a little bit? Why don't, why don't we talk a little bit about, I mean, from a restaurant perspective, you've got the bar side and then you've got this side. What are, what are some of the goals that you have for the restaurant as you see going forward? Yeah. Uh, It'll be nicer dining, definitely. We're going to have uh, a broad in menu with steaks, pastas, seafood, yeah. a bunch of specials that Tony will create. That's yeah, awesome. Absolutely, yeah. It's my nicer, whole, my nicer whole background is fine dining, so want to bring that available to Albia, while at the same time we'll still keep the bar atmosphere. Um, so that's kind of the way we've constructed everything to keep kind of a bar side and then a nicer dining area to where we can have, um, you know, a separate, I guess, more family atmosphere on this side and then keep more a bar atmosphere on that side. Kind of the best uh, of both worlds, really. Exactly, right? yeah. yeah. So, yeah. And, I mean, you'll still be able to do all the burgers and tenderloins and everything on this side as well, but also be able to option a lot nicer options, or offer nicer options for, you know, uh, people that want to have nicer dining options around the area. So, I mean, you guys commissioned Joel and I to build this table. How's this yes. table, how's this table it's, fit into those goals? Well... The table is absolutely just Beautiful. phenomenal to begin with, um, and it uh, so it all kind of um, a lot of the the decor and everything you see in the new restaurant here is all a homage to my dad. Um, all the woodwork is from my father's farm, which most of the wood in this table is, other than the uh, the locust and stuff from you. And uh, so it was just you know um, wanting to build something to really um i guess honor my family background like i said i'm born and raised graduated high school everything here in town and uh so a lot of all the stuff you'll see in here is from my father my grandfather uh there's a marble down there given to him by his great grandmother um i mean so just decades of my family background i guess and uh you know just really wanted some way to uh, honor my dad in his passing, and and, and so you've really is, created a family heirloom. Yeah, absolutely, for us. yes. So, it's yeah, how many awesome. generations of artifacts do you think you have in here? Well, at like, least three. Yeah, like I know directly. There's my my grandfather's, my dad's, mine, and my son's stuff in here. Four. And wow. then, like I said, that marble over there. It's hard to see. It's a marble, but that little lamb you see in the corner there. That was given to him by his great-grandmother, I believe it was, from early 1900s. So there's a lot of years of uh, legacy in this table, yeah. I guess. Um, yeah. And it's all permanently preserved. I mean, I think Absolutely, we, yeah. How many, Jake, how many uh, gallons of uh, poly do we have on I, that? I think we ended up with around 15, uh, just to round it off. I think it was just shy of that, but uh, yeah, it was... Uh, it, Quite well, a, it was a lot. Yeah, it was a lot. Absolutely. I think I said poly, but it's really two part epoxy. But yep. yeah, yeah, yeah. It, uh, there's a lot of holes in here, and then uh, when we did fill the table, as you've seen in the video already, it uh, you know it any anything underneath the table that seeps through and has to fill up. Yeah, and yeah. There's more. Yeah. There's more capacity in the table than what it looks like. Yeah, I gotta say, <laughs> it, it honestly was a lot bigger undertaking than I originally imagined it to be. Uh, well, you started in your garage and then after you got, we got the, the base built for it and you started on the top, we had to move it up here to <laughs> build everything in place. It's four inches solid thick top and oh yeah, God, I can't imagine what 1400 pounds or close to now. <laughs> we're not moving it. Yeah. And don't, don't, don't ask us to move it. Yeah. Money, so People we're... ask where it's going to go. I'm like, all right there. <laughs> <laughs> where it's built yeah it's beautiful what uh, now that the table's here and i know this uh this part of the restaurant isn't open yet soon to be a date yep. to be announced yeah um but um, what's your intent of the use of the table well ideally um i i refer to it as the chef's table um with that being said i i mean it's welcome to you know families and everything but uh, the way i i Ideally, picture it, it would be doing specialty dinners, you know, groups of four, six, eight people, 
wanting to do a specialty, you know, evening out, uh, like a pairing dinner where just be a totally specially prepared menu. Um, you know, you call and ask to reserve it. You want a, a, a dinner, you know, a, you know, three, four, five, seven course, what you want, any allergies, any, you know, uh, anything you absolutely won't eat. And then other than that, just create a special meal if you want it paired with beer, wine, or whatnot. And, but just to make it really uh, just a very special evening for a group of, you know, friends, family, whatever it may be that like, that want a nice dining experience, don't want to have to travel up to Des Moines or whatnot, I can do it here and, you know, like I said, just kind of create a specialty menu. Um, nothing off the menu or maybe some things off the menu, but uh, just kind of depending on what it may be, um, just kind of play it by ear and, and totally create, have a total special evening. I'll prepare the food and serve it and Kim will help serve everything and, you know, and... Uh, well, I can't wait. For I'm, me, I just can't wait. I just, I'm excited just listening to this. And I've witnessed, <laughs> some of your, I've witnessed some of your creations. I mean, your creations are great. I mean, Well, thank you. Yeah. Appreciate it. I mean, I could sit here and go through a hand of half a dozen right <laughs> off the top of my head. Yeah. But, uh, yeah, this is going to be super exciting. Is there one yeah. piece in the table you would say, hey, means something special to you beyond all the other pieces? Well, um, I mean, honestly, I guess... To begin with, uh, the the way the whole thing started, I guess, was kind of this area over here uh, on the bottom right hand side here it was, it kind of started as a homage to my parents. And so that little area there has my mom and dad's business cards and some of their world travels and stuff. And um, like I said, I moved back here six years ago and lost my dad to leukemia. And that's why I moved back home to be around my mom and family and, and uh, started building this and then this idea kind of came about i originally i didn't plan on it being anything near the scale it is now yeah, i just talked to you guys about building a butcher block table for me <laughs> and this is what it has uh, transpired to be but uh so yeah i mean it's just i mean all of it really it's you know like i said all family heirlooms but uh yeah my dad mom's cards are in there and dad's little uh, shooting homage over here and just uh yeah, great memories of family time and growing up and yeah. yeah it was a joy to build i mean really beautiful table yeah, yeah I, I mean what a great tribute yeah in closing before we cut everything off let's let's uh, do a little uh you know advertising for brick street again sure. so the name of the restaurant where it's located and uh, yeah. how you can be reached yeah, absolutely sure. yeah. it's brick street grill in albia iowa yep uh, we're at uh, 24a avenue west uh Number is 515-932-5442. Um, please give a call anytime. If, uh, we don't really do reservations at this point. It's first come, first serve. But once we get to opening this area, and then this table especially, like those types of parties would be by reservation only. But um, And we're on Facebook um, as well. Yeah, absolutely. And that's a Brick Street Grill, uh, Johnson style. Albia, yep. Albia and uh, yeah. So, uh, well, I know Tim mentioned this, but I want to—I don't think we can say this enough. I mean, to be part of this is an honor, and, and it's, uh, yeah, it's special to us. And uh, man, I, I like I said, I can't wait to to sit down on here and have a whatever course yes. meal, yeah. a burger if that's what it is. I'm you just know, excited yeah. <laughs> to use the table. Well, if and, it's a burger, uh, it's going to be a damn fancy burger. <laughs> <laughs> But uh, thank you guys for so much for giving us the yes. opportunity to do thank this. Thank you guys you very for, much for yeah. everything. This is yeah. just so much. Beautiful, it, beautiful, yes, beautiful. it has turned out even more gorgeous than I could ever have imagined it. And just, like I said, yeah, I, I, in the beginning, I was just thinking just a plain butcher block table. And then <laughs> <laughs> after yes. back and forth talking, and very this special. is, yeah, it has become, uh, if, if anything ever happens with the restaurant, I will be building a room on my house to put this table in. <laughs> That's awesome. Well, if you're in the Albia area, stop by and see Tony and Kim at uh, Brick Street. And until then, Tim, yeah. be, be safe, safe, have, have fun, fun, and, and get, get outdoors. outdoors. Cheers. Cheers. <laughs>
Thanks for listening or watching our show. We have some exciting topics and guests coming up. We ask that you subscribe to our channel on YouTube and follow us on Twitter, Instagram, and Facebook. We look forward to hearing your suggestions for topics, questions, and comments. This is Two Dumbasses signing off. Until next time, be be safe, safe, have have fun, fun, and and get get outdoors. outdoors.